Doctors and nurses of Reddit, what was the most interesting Valentine's Day related injury as you witnessed yesterday? Had a guy come into the ear complaining of chest pain. I was tridging and he said he had no history cardiovascular or pulmonary disease. I asked what triggered his pain and he said he came home early from work and he found his girlfriend in bed with another guy. He said it broke his heart. When I caught my ex-husband cheating on me, it did break my heart. It's a real thing. The pain was incredible. And awful. Had a guy come in with multiple stab wounds. He was HIV positive. Hep C. Herpes. His girlfriend came in with flowers and balloons and crap. Then he told her he was HIV positive and that he had known and never told her. Chaos ensued. I assume he is legally obligated to tell partners. I'm assuming that in addition to being stabbed and dumped he is in legal trouble. Had a guy come in who was not fully responsive. And one of the first things we do with points like this is strip them naked. We come to find that he has a 3-5 pound weight ring thing around his balls. Had to call engineering to get some tools to get it off. Not sure if this was a regular everyday thing or something special for the holiday. Either way, dude had a giant weight on his balls. It's never a good sign when you're getting treated at a hospital and suddenly you need the help of the engineering department. Not doctor, but veterinary staff. We had a dog get into some special Valentine's Day chocolates which, alone, is a bad thing. Only these weren't just normal chocolates, but special chocolates. Dog ended up consuming 200 milligrams of THC. He knew. Had a bummer of a Valentine's Day at work yesterday. Got called by PD for a SWAT standby for a barricaded subject. Apparently the guy was a doctor from a local hospital that showed up to his girlfriend's apartment with a gun and strangled her. Long story short the girlfriend was transported to the hospital earlier and is doing alright as far as I know. By the time they called me in 5 hours later the doc had shot himself in the mouth and had been dead a few hours already. Nothing much left to do but call the medical examiner and call out an official time of death. Happy Valentine's Day indeed. WTF it's like everyone had the great idea to lose their crap yesterday. EDRN. Dong ring wrong size. First time user didn't take into account how big he would get after he put it on. Couldn't orgasm and became swollen. Ended up with a compartment syndrome type injury. Sawed the ring off in the oar. Dentist. My hygienist pointed out that our new patient had multiple petitiae on her soft palate. First thing I ask. Do you have a significant other? She said no. When was the last time you sucked on a straw with something thick in it? Like a DQ blizzard? Typical oral trauma from fellatio. I know what she was doing last night. Had a man come the entrance and would not talk to any female nurses. Eventually we talked to him and he lost a vibrator in his rectum colon. After x-rays we found it had worked its way up his descending colon and lodged itself at the bend going into his transverse colon. When it was pulled out from surgery, the vibrator was still running wide open. Gosh I hope I'm not too late to the party. I coo hospitalist PA we have a patient with necrotizing fasciitis of her upper thigh groin area and profuse vaginal bleeding requiring transfusion. Nurse last night noted what appeared to be seminal fluid on her bed. When questioned patient adamantly denies. Evening nurse walks in yesterday to find the boyfriend railing the patient in her IQ bed. Full Monty in her neck fast thighs and bloody yams. There were also reports that he was face down in her lap. Imagination tells me what he was doing at that time. In an IQ bed. Just thinking of it makes me nauseous. Happy Valentine's Day. He was making it special for her before he was removed from the room by security. Dad's a urologist, and he had to leave Valentine's last night to go take care of a guy with a fractured penis. Needless to say, someone was having a ton of fun, and then they weren't. Neither was your dad. Nursing student here, had clinicals on Valentine's, working the air, towards the end of a 12 hour shift. We had a girl come and saying she just had a miscarriage. She claims when she took her tampon out, and she saw bits of unknown clumps and skin. So she was sure she was prego and had a miscarriage. We were all convinced she just had some nasty menstrual blood clots. She said her BF broke up with her a few days ago and wanted him to know she was up there because of a miscarriage and wanted us to call him. All lab work came back negative. 
so she was never prego, I think she just wanted to make her bf feel bad about breaking up with her before valentines and to rub it in his face. Also, she claimed she's been craving pickles for the longest time so she was convinced that she was prego. She even asked for a pickle while in one of the waiting rooms. Not either but an EMT firefighter had a dude fall onto a dildo, arrived on scene and asked to see said dildo so that I could get an idea of the damage it may have caused to his butthole. He proceeded to open a drawer next to his bed that had an arrangement of dildos, all different shapes and sizes. Of course the one he used was the biggest blackest one in the drawer. He ended up being emergency transported because he ripped his sphincter from his anus and had massive internal bleeding. Not a human doctor nurse, but a veterinarian. Dog got into a gift a guy had bought for his FWBGF and eaten the four pairs of lacy, colorful Victoria's secret thongs that were inside. Dog got a foreign body obstruction and had to go to emergency surgery. Best, saddest, part was the guy guilted the girl into paying for the surgery, as he blamed her for the dog getting into the underwear since the gift was for her. Also, so much chocolate toxicity, so much. Poor dog on so many levels. We had a couple of bad suicide attempts in the ED that may have been valentines related. But then again we have attempted suicides all the time. So maybe it wasn't related. Got the usual shootings and stabbings. 2. Maybe valentines related? Roses are red. Violets are stab. Stab stab stab. Stab stab stab. I worked ems in a past life. If your female partner gets injured while you all are getting freaky it's better to admit it. Otherwise we tend to think you hurt her intentionally and we start giving her the phone number to helplines on the down low. She got stabbed at the vagina. I don't know how. This is actually something from years ago. Not yesterday. Sorry, but I feel like it's still a good story. As a medical student on a surgery rotation, we got a page on 2 stroke 15 that xx year old female in ED swallowed knife. Obviously we tried to figure out what happened as soon as possible. Apparently she swallowed a butter knife. How one might ask, not sure exactly what happened because she was whisked away to have it removed before I ever got near. Word on the street was it was because she was dissatisfied with her valentine's day celebrations. Maybe she wanted to show off how far she could go without gagging and the knife slipped out of her fingers. A man and his girlfriend decided to get a little kinky and stuffed several AA batteries up the guy's butt. They didn't come back out. Confirmed on abdominal x-ray. A guy wanted to surprise his partner with a rose coming out of his penis thing is he didn't quite get all the thorns off. They were pointing up so the rose went in alright, out not so much. I want to know why he thought that would be a good idea. I don't even have a dong and I haven't cringed this hard in my life. Not a nurse or whatever, but here I go. Bought my ex one of those vibrating, remote butt plugs. She was into the whole, master slave thing. Anyway, we go to dinner that night for Valentine's Day. She hands me the remote while we walk into the restaurant. Welp. She sat down too hard and the flared part went inside. So we had to go to the air to get it removed. Not going to lie, I pressed the remote a few times while we were waiting in the air. We both went to high school with the doctor. So it was a little weird. After a few hours, he got it out of her, put it in a baggie and told her to be careful. This was a few years ago, but it still makes me laugh. Unfortunately all funny sexy stories were overshadowed by a mass critical emergency alert going out after a halfway house caught fire. Three people died, including a firefighter. Dozens of others were hospitalized. The entire was a wreck when I showed up in the afternoon. Comma not fun anymore. GF decided to go all angry cupid on her BF. Shot him in the head with a nail gun. Nail was stuck in his skull. Not this year. My mom was a nurse and told me this one. One time when she was in the air she went into a room where the patient had a complaint of something in their rectum. So she went into the room and looked at the wife and asked what was going on with her. Where the object was. How deep etc. The wife looks at her husband and he goes uh oh. Turns out the husband had a dildo shoved so far up his butt they had to do surgery to have it removed. Not a doctor or RN but I am a paramedic. Couple years back I responded to a shooting early am. 
2-ish, after Valentine's to find one woman shot multiple times and man with a single gun shot to his head. They got in a fight after trying to go out and fix their relationship. She told him she wanted him to move out and he got crazy and told her he'd kill her, which I took it he'd threaded before. This time he produced a gun and pointed it at her pulled the trigger but it didn't go off. So he recocked it and fired again while she held up her hands. First shot went through her left ring finger just above her wedding band. She turned and ran into her bedroom and he shot her in the back hitting her in the right trapezius just above her scapula. She fell behind the bed and froze up in fear and pain and I guess the guy assumed she was dead. So he put the gun against his forehead and killed himself. She heard him fall and looked up, then scrambled over him and into the bathroom where she called 911. Definitely the worst breakup I've ever encountered. Last Valentine's Day, I had a 20 something year old girl come in with her boyfriend due to having a torn perineum. Gooch. She stated they were having vaginal intercourse when he accidentally plunged into her rectum, instantly causing it to rip. While she told this story, her boyfriend sat there nodding his head with pride and a grin on his face. She did indeed have a tear in her rectum that extended into the perineum. I sewed it up and wished I had counseled them on the use of lubricants. My butthole puckered just thinking about that. Accidental anal is the worst. A truck driver about 70 years old came straight from work into the air with low back pain. He was at least close to 220 pounds and with a big beard and all. Nothing unusual showed up during the examination, so we did an x-ray. Turned out that the guy had three small plastic coffer cups showed up in his butt. We told him what we had found and he acted all surprised and said that he had no idea how those cups ended up in his rectum. This isn't necessarily Valentine's Day related, but it involved the heart and was on Valentine's Day haha. An older patient went into touch which is considered a lethal rhythm. He was awake and talking to us though. They called a code blue and were establish another IV, giving meds, etc. They asked him if his chest hurt and how he was feeling. He said his chest just felt tight and he kept saying he needed his Viagra. His wife interjected and was like, no, honey, you mean your nitro. I mean it's okay to chuckle after the emergency. He was shocked once and went back to a normal rhythm and was moved to the IQ. So as good as a code blue could get. Well. I mean, Viagra is technically a vasodilator. So this is a story a friend of mine told me who's an EMT, but I don't know if it was on Valentine's Day. The call was along the lines, one male and one female with a head wound and a one bleeding in the genital area. When he and his college arrived they found the woman in the living room with a towel on her head and the man in the bedroom sitting on the bed with a towel between his legs. After some questioning this is what happened. This young couple were having fun in the bedroom and the guy wanted to make pancakes afterwards. So he did that and naturally he was flipping them in the pan. At some point the girl decided to blow him while he was cooking. And that's where the funny part happened. A little distracted. He failed at pan flipping. Dropped the pancake on her head and in this moment she flinched and bit him. Shocked by the pain he instinctly banged the pan on her head causing her head wound. I will never understand how people can think it is a good idea to cook while having any form of sex. I could nurse. Not valentines related, but flu related. Tis the season. We have had several patients die in our unit because they had the flu and were taking Theraflu. Dayquil. Tylenol. ETC, all at the same time and not realizing that all of those drugs have acetaminophen in them. Multiple patients unwittingly put themselves in liver failure, dying within days of admission. Please dear god read your labels on medicine and tell everyone you know, especially parents and teenagers, to make sure they are not accidentally overdosing themselves or their children with acetaminophen, or any OTC drugs. Just because you don't need a prescription doesn't mean it can't kill you. I have cried for too many patients we lost due to this. It is so horrible and avoidable. Please read your labels. Please. A nurse here. Late at night a man came with a pocket rocket vibrator stuck up his pooper to the ER. The story goes something like he was being embossed to the surgeon so before scheduling the case, the surgeon decided to do the case in the morning. When the surgeon told us the next day that he went to visit the guy in the morning to schedule his case, the surgeon asked him how his night was. The man said he didn't sleep a wink, cause the dang thing was vibrating the whole night. Haha. <laughs> I want to know what brand of batteries these people are using. I'm a nurse. 
This happened a few years ago, and not on Valentine's Day, but we had this elderly couple admitted together to the unit. I think they were in their 70s. Somehow during sex they both ended up on the floor. The husband banged his head pretty bad so we were monitoring him for an internal hemorrhage. The wife got pretty banged up, no pun intended, and had a fractured hip. We put them in the same room together. Wasn't Valentine's, but went to pick a patient up from the ED for a late night. Urgent surgery, not necessarily a trauma, which is usually the only surgeries we did at night. His girlfriend is in the room with him. Guy volunteers to go over via wheelchair, so he gets up and walks over to me. As soon as he stands up, I see something dark and red dripping from beneath his gown onto the floor. I immediately think he's ripped out his catheter, but when he sees where I'm looking, he explains. Oh, yeah, we were having sex. She was on top. I popped out when she bounced up, and when she came back down, despite everything he was in pretty good spirits and I regret not asking what kind of painkillers they gave him to make that tolerable because Jesus tapped and sing Christ, man. Had a 64 year old guy rush to the ear complaining of intense chest pain and loss of vision, but with a visible heart on covered by a blanket. That's why the Viagra ads say ask your doctor if your heart is healthy enough for sex. Any intense physical activity can be dangerous if your heart health is compromised. Walking through the hall in an air, heard power tools and smelled that dead skin odor you get when you take a cast off. Assumed that's what was happening. Found out later a man had some kind of metal ring stuck around the base of his penis that had become embedded, hence the dead flesh smell. Ended up going to the ore. My mother works in and told me this. A gay couple were driving back from their dinner and apparently the passenger decided he should give the driver a BJ. Driver rear-ended another car and the guy giving the BJ bit into his partner's penis and nearly bit it off. Also, this is one she had from last year as an added bonus. A couple in their late 30s decided to try some new techniques in bed. The husband had to be rushed to her because he fell off the bed performing one and his ribs broke and slightly punctured his lung and the wife ended up with a strained back trying to help him up. I am surprised that there aren't any stories about men breaking their dong from trying a new sexual position or injuring themselves with some dumb fool romantic stunt. Not an injury per se, but I was working with pediatrics at the time. So this kid came in with his toy T-Rex and forgot it in my office. I kept it there for him for months. Eventually I took it with me to other hospitals and now every time I travel to a new place around the world I carry it with me. I'd like to think that boy knows his toy is having cool adventures. That's actually pretty awesome of you to do. Not a nurse doctor, but I did manage to nearly remove my fingertips with a cheese grater. Roommate's boyfriend was starting to work on their dinner, and asked for some help grating cheese. He bought a new grater, and it had a hard plastic cover on it. I could not for the life of my get the cover off. Eventually I managed to get the tips of my fingers underneath the end of the cover and pulled with all my might. The cover popped off and I forcibly yanked my fingertips across the grater, leaving a good deal of flesh behind. Gah. Just the image in my head is horrifying. That's one of my greatest fears. Not a doctor, so if I should delete this tell me. But I am just getting back from taking my roommate to the hospital. Him and his lady friend decided to explore his liking of, but, insertion, stuff. Long story short guys, dildos have balls and wider bases for a reason. There is such a thing as too deep. Not according to anal acrobats. This was a few years ago when those gel candles were all the rage. The couple had planned some romantic sexy times and had lined the headboard of the bed with fancy expensive gel candles. A couple hours later, things got a little wild and several of the candles were knocked into the bed. Fun fact, those candles turn into goddamn napalm light when melted. The gel is super hot, and likes to stick, q2 people in the air with splatter burns after burning half the house down. We had a guy come in with a titanium dong ring around both his penis and testicles. After exhaustion of all the typical lubrication techniques he was sent down to theaters to have it surgically cut off. Around 4 hours later and all of our tools exhausted there was not a scratch on this metal ring. It was around an inch thick and heavy and it was impossible to get the orthopedic sores underneath without damaging the man's penis. Ring cutters left no dent. 
It was getting to the point where the nurses were preparing to phone the fire brigade and have them cut it off but times were getting desperate. It had taken two general surgeons and an orthopedic surgeon two hours to leave a tiny scratch. Eventually the max fax, maxillofacial surgeon, suggested we set up a dental drill and irrigation and attempt to cut through it that way. A nurse managed to push a swab under the ring to protect the skin and 35 minutes later the ring was in two pieces getting placed in a plastic bag for the patient to take home. The main problem with the ring was its sheer size. It resembled a large curtain ring and was solid metal. The only irregularity was a small module on one side that stuck out about half a centimeter from the ring itself. The patient told me very happily that the nodule is known as the devil's tickler when I asked what it was. I asked him why he would push his testicles through too and he simply said he really really likes pain. Overall he was a very nice man. I advised him to buy a silicone one next time and maybe not leave it on for 13 hours before coming to hospital. Had a guy come in with a huge gash on his thumb. Said he tried to open a bottle with a belt buckle because he didn't have a bottle opener. The handcuffs were so tight on the wife it dug into her skin with constant bleeding. They couldn't find the key. Couldn't cut the one stroke two inch thick chain. That's why proper sex handcuffs have a two link chain. And one of the links is split. Twist your arms. And they break. You now have many more options than before. Not a doctor. But. Valentine's Day with my lovely. At the time. Girlfriend. She had a big. But. Ha. Huh, shapely bum. She's on top and we've been having a great time for the last 30 plus minutes plus. It comes time to finish. And as she's not on the pill, she gets down on her knees and squeezes her boobs together for the finale. I start to CM. And a huge rope of CM sprays out and slashes across her chest. Unfortunately, this rope of CM was 50% blood, as was the rest of my load. She said looking up at me she knew something was wrong because my face went pale and I immediately told her not to look down. She was a champ about it, just cleaned up and went to bed together. What followed was a year of ultrasounds, doctors and technicians fondling my balls and cameras up the dong into the bladder. Eventual diagnosis was epididymis orchitis, basically a bleed in the rope connecting the testicles to the body, recurring randomly. It literally killed our sex life and eventually our relationship because the blood would clog the works up and my orgasm would get stalled in the risk of bloody TCETC. Nothing like telling a new partner if you see me cooming blood don't worry, wouldn't recommend. Dentist here. There are signs of rough oral sex called petechial hemorrhages of the soft palate secondary to fellatio. We know more than just the lie that you floss every day. Haha. <laughs> Maybe I just really like drinking Wendy's Frosties with a small straw. Not a doctor, but my wife and I did manage to fracture my penis. Who knew? That being said the doctors and nurses were completely unfazed by it and dealt with me like a normal patient. If they were laughing at me, which would have been totally fair, they did it in private. TL. DR. Reverse cowgirl is not to be taken lightly. Not a doctor or nurse but last year on Valentine's Day my buddy was talking to me, his roommate and a few friends on team speak. 6 p.m. he told us he'd leave to grab dinner with the girl. 8 p.m. his roommate tells us he just came home with her after investigating a noise. 8.15 p.m. he slams open the door of his roommate. Bro, I need some help, he said with a towel in his crotch. User has disconnected from the channel. Next day he told us the dude broke his willy trying to put it in and there was blood everywhere in his room. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.